Welcome back, everyone. It's been a great conference morning for us. Uh, please welcome our next presenter. We are welcoming Drone Deck. It's a private company who holds a robust first position patent portfolio for secure drone package receiving and storage. Please welcome its CEO, Dan O'Toole. Hi, Dan. How are you doing today? Great, Anna. How are you? Great. Excited to hear your presentation and learn about Drone Deck. So the floor is yours. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Hey, thanks for joining us today, everybody. Um, love to share the drone deck story uh, with me today. Nirav Shah, our chief strategy officer, and John Richardson, our chief legal counsel and patent attorney. So with that, um, we're going to uh, kick off a quick pitch deck here and uh, tell the drone deck story. So uh, drone deck is the next generation mailbox. We're consolidating all delivery to one secure point to include uh, unmanned driverless vehicle delivery, robotic delivery, aerial drone delivery, as well as U.S. mail and conventional delivery. Uh, Forward-looking statements, um, you know, these are all projections and uh, just want to make everybody aware of the typical uh, disclaimer, right? You know, we always love to say that we've got great intellectual property here. We have a first position patent portfolio that we're very excited about. It's the foundational basis of our company. But um, as good as that is, you really need an excellent world-class team to execute on that IP every single day, and that's what we're doing. Uh, we've got leaders from every walk of corporate life, uh, including business development, innovation, strategy, technology, legal, accounting, business development, and in addition to the great expertise that each individual brings, uh, we've got great experience from some of the largest companies in the world, and we're executing every day here at Drone Deck. So uh, we love our team and really excited about where we are. You know, I always like to say it's great to you know kind of toot your own horn and brag about yourself, but it's even better when others do it for you. Uh, this slide is pretty exciting. Um, NASDAQ recently reached out to us. Uh, and stated that, um, you know, every day they're looking for the next big thing, uh, the next listed company, and uh, they've identified Drone Deck as that potential next company. Um, they, they think that the technology uh, is innovative, it's creating a new a new category, and uh, they think Drone Deck is, is the next company, and they know we have a choice, and they said, you know, when you choose uh, New York, Ontario, London, NASDAQ, we hope it's us at NASDAQ. Uh, so they offered to do a shout out to Drone Deck on the iconic uh, NASDAQ tower uh, there in Times Square. So that was very uh, exciting, kind of a bucket list opportunity, right? Uh, we're based out of Lawrence, Indiana, which is a suburb of Indianapolis. Um, and one of the things we wanted to do was uh, we wanted to bring uh, Lawrence, Indiana into uh, the message if we could. And it was kind of a surprise. We didn't want to tell them about it because we didn't know if it would happen or not, but here's our message. And we got to share that. And uh, uh, we shared that with the city of Lawrence when that happened. And the mayor used that in the state of the city address and said, hey, this is the first time Lawrence, Indiana was ever on the NASDAQ. So uh, we kind of got a two for one out of that. It was really exciting. Uh, the bottom left there, I got to go on Fox Business News with uh, Neil Cavuto and talk about the Drone Deck IP. And then we've had uh, other great uh, traction in the media. If you Google Drone Deck, you'll see uh, a lot of relevant and timely news about our company. So we're really excited that, that we've got that traction going. We're gonna play a quick video here uh, to kind of uh, uh, show you, uh, you know, pictures worth a thousand words, kind of the Drone Deck strategy, philosophy, and where we're going. Uh, I always want to say we're not the drone, we're the drone deck. We're that little piece of real estate that's the gateway to every home and business uh, with great connectivity where every delivery will start or end. That's drone deck. So, Ryan, if you could tee up that video real quick, please, and play that. It's a couple-minute video, and we'll come back after after the video. Thanks, guys.
So internally, we like to talk about the movement away from, you know, people getting in their station wagons and their minivans and going to the store, this movement towards the Amazon economy, people getting more items at home, delivered at home. And that's created its own set of challenges. Obviously, it's super convenient, but we've got, you know, things like porch piracy. Uh, we've got 1.7 million packages um, lost or stolen on a daily basis in the United States alone. Um, you know, misshipments, lost items. Uh, obviously, there's a huge environmental cost with all the delivery vans in neighborhoods. We've all seen them. Um, so, you know, it's created uh, congestion on the roads, more wear and tear. And and with the economy and things, uh, people just having delivery drivers is an issue. So we're seeing uh, issues created by this movement towards the Amazon economy. Um, and also the fact that you need to be home to sign for packages uh, creates just that little friction. So we, we think that there's a huge opportunity in addressing some of these some of these issues. So delivering to a drone deck, uh, you'd save a billion dollars with automated deliveries every 11 days, and that's in the United States alone. So delivering again to a drone deck, just to emphasize the number, a billion dollars every 11 days is saved to the shipping economy. Hey, what's and that based on, Nirav? Tell them real quick what that's based on the costing. So, yeah. yep, sorry, yep. So that's based on a $2 traditional delivery versus a $1 automated delivery. So delivering to a drone deck cuts the delivery uh, costs in half from $2 to $1. Um, thanks, Dan. So the other, uh, you know, I'd mentioned some of the congestion issues we have on the road. So for every 1% of deliveries to a, to a drone deck or automated deliveries, we're taking 3,000 trucks off the road. Again, that's a huge number in the United States. So, you know, 1% creates, a, just even moving 1% creates a huge savings um, from an environmental perspective. The other opportunity, the other thing that we can bring is uh, expanding the, sh the capabilities of what can ship. Um, so with our temperature controlled box and also with, you know, chain of custody, we know what ships where when. We're also able to ship things like medication, hot food, cannabis. We can secure that, keep it hot, keep it cold, whatever is needed. Um, and from a business or, you know, if we think about a B2B situation within hospitals, you can move samples effectively within that and, and report who picked up the samples and it's all kept in the blockchain ledger. So we're pretty excited about expanding the delivery envelope. And again, you know, it can be 24 hours. You don't need to be at home. Um, with our technology, you can drop things off in the box. People, you know, you can, uh, you can sign for it virtually. And so that just creates a, a bigger window to ship things in. And I'd mentioned the superior ESG. So we feel there's a there's a great opportunity that we have in uh, in our box. Dan, thanks, Nirav. Yep. So kind of dovetailing with what Nirav just said, you know, the Amazon economy. We've all seen the shift, coronavirus, uh, uh, the acceleration of convenience, uh, the labor gap, all those kind of things. Uh, you know, the trajectory of small uh, packages. Ninety one percent of all. Uh, sold items are five pounds or less, which really makes them uh, really ripe for uh, drone and autonomous delivery. But you can see the trajectory of shipments and delivery. The USPS in the last three years has gone from 219 billion delivered items to 250 billion. Amazon in that same period of time has tripled their deliveries from two and a half billion to six and a half billion while leapfrogging UPS, FedEx and others. So it, it's definitely happening. Um, there's a hundred million items purchased every day online and 91% of those, as I stated, are five pounds or less. UPS just recently sold their trucking division to concentrate solely on the smaller package delivery. Um, and anecdotally in Fort Wayne, Indiana today, which is a kind of a middle market city in Indiana, UPS will deliver to 8,000 more unique locations than they did in Fort Wayne, Indiana just a couple of years ago. So if you extrapolate that across every carrier, across the country, you can see there's a, a huge gap that needs to be bridged. And the only way you're going to do that is through autonomy. 
You're off. Yeah, thanks, Dan. So a couple of things we wanted to show here. One is automated deliveries are happening. Uh, we may not see it in our own backyards, but we can see in uh, Australia where there's over uh, 200,000 packages shipped in 2021, and they're looking to expand that in, in 2022. Also in the U.S., you can see all the locations where drone delivery is happening. Uh, we're, we're, a lot of that's aided and abetted by the FAA. So they're slowly, we can see kind of on the on the left side of the screen, some of the changes to help make this happen. So there's things like remote ID, flying over populated areas, flying at night. So they're chipping away at the at the regulations that allow for <coughs> automated delivery. And we're seeing exemptions being granted to several companies for what we call type certification to allow for beyond visual line of sight. So that's where you don't need to have a pilot with the eyes on the on the drone. And that's happening. We're seeing a lot of ground robot uh, companies entering the fray, and we think that's going to be a very compelling area. So you'll have multi-modes of delivery from automated uh, aerial vehicles to ground vehicles to, to the traditional human uh, uh, deliveries. So you can see a lot of the big name players um, on the bottom right, um, Walmart, Google, Amazon, um, all making deliveries, uh, Zipline, Matternet, some other companies. So we're seeing that spread across the United States, and we're looking at up to 4 million homes having uh, automated deliveries here in the next couple of years. So pretty exciting space. Thanks. Yep, thanks, Daryl. Uh, just, just kind of discussing the uh, competitive landscape here. Um, you can see on the left, we've got some of the trillion dollar market cap companies, some of the largest companies in the world, Google, Amazon, Walmart, uh, others. Uh, they're all iterating in the same space we are. Uh, they're working on what we would consider the commodity side of things, which would be the delivery modes, whether it's robotic delivery, unmanned driverless vehicle or aerial drone. <laughs> Those are all kind of commodities. That one little piece of real estate where every uh, shipment will start or end, uh, that is really the welcome mat, the gateway to every home and business throughout the world, that's Drone Deck. We have a first position patent portfolio in the space and uh, we're executing on that every day. And we know that in the long run, there's not gonna be uh, wholesale autonomous delivery without a Drone Deck in the ecosystem. The mailbox hasn't been disrupted since 1858 and the notion of dropping food, beverage, uh, pharmaceutical, cannabis, uh, high valued items on the ground is just a non-starter. And we, th we see that as a huge impediment to the rollout of autonomous delivery. So enter drone deck and that uh, solves the whole ecosystem. So we're really excited about our position. Uh, this is just a um, example of uh, drone deck in, in motion here. So if you look at the top left, uh, we've actually built the U.S. Postal Service mailbox right into our drone deck. We know that there's not going to be three drone decks in somebody's yard or in front of their business. Uh, you're not going to have a Google, Amazon, or a Postal Service. You're going to have one uh, delivery mode, and that's drone deck, and that we're platform agnostic, so we're welcoming to all shippers and deliverers. So it's necessary that you have the U.S. Postal Service built into there along with the capacity to work with others as well. So in the top left picture there, we're actually receiving a USPS delivery. The top right, the cargo doors open to accept uh, a, a delivery from a commercial drone. Uh, and then we've got some side views with different measurements there. And then we have a current feature set um, that's in our production units today. On the left there, uh, future uh, product set uh, is on the on the right column there. And those are items that we're gonna be rolling out into our uh, our units uh, as we um, get get those rolling out in the next year. Product use cases. Um, the great thing about Drone Deck and what we discussed a little bit earlier is 91% of all deliveries. Sorry about that. I don't know what that is. Can somebody mute maybe? Thanks guys, sorry about that. Just wanna see if everybody's up out there. So anyway, uh, the great thing about what we're doing uh, Five pounds or less is 91% of all commerce. So that means that all use cases transcend uh, the opportunity for Drone Deck to work with. So uh, you can see in a typical zip code scenario here, uh, medical campuses, universities, business parks, restaurants, uh, on the residential, single family, multifamily, assisted living, apartments, then governmental, uh, defense, uh, private, all those kind of things uh, roll up. And we think that um, the efficiency of saturating zip codes is really the key. Uh, and because we have the ability to really take on such a majority of all commerce, it really lends itself to well, well to what we're doing. Next, next slide. 
and I think you're yeah. muted. Yeah, we're on product evolution, Dan. So, yeah, John, do you want to take that one? Yeah, I've got that. Um, Dan's first idea was coming came back in 2014 when he was driving back from Chicago to Indianapolis, and he saw a drone out in the field, and he thought, okay, what's going to happen when people start bringing packages in by the drone? And immediately he came up with the box idea, and along with the box idea, he said, it needs to have security. Obviously, the drone needs to be able to talk to the, the box. And then we also wanted, Dan also wanted in his first patent to uh, be able to, to talk to the user, the person that's going to be receiving it. So we put those functions in, and, and Dan came to me early in 2014, and we went forward very quickly to the patent office. And that eventually was a secured first patent for 2017. As you see the product evolution go from there, um, Dan's mind didn't stop at just uh, thinking about security and thinking about communication. It went beyond that. It started thinking about, okay, we're going to need it for uh, people at their residences, but what about business? What about commercial uses? Uh, what about multiple uses? And then other things happen along the way, uh, things such as COVID. What do we do when we get a package and, and we're worried about where's that package been? Does it does it need to be sanitized? Do we need to take care of whatever that package is bringing with it? So the first patent had a lot of the features, a lot of the functions. And then as we went at the second patent and on beyond with the uh, other patent applications we've got out there, we added a lot of features and functions. Those features and functions uh, have given us now today not only our original uh, small secure package, to, but also a larger uh, commercial type package and a commercial type drone deck. Um, go ahead, uh, near off and go to the next slide. Right now we have two patents that we've been approved by the United States. We have four patents that are being looked at um, in the United States. And we also have an additional 48 patents that are being looked at in international settings. Those patents and patent applications all told have over 111 claims and those claims have many of those functions and features that um, I think two or three slides back uh, Dan had uh, alluded to. So we're very, very excited about what we've got. We think we have a very robust uh, patent portfolio, but we're not st stopping there. Uh, currently, we're even into our, our next generation. Um, and many of you may know this, but some of you don't, that we actually have regulations on the book. Um, where the government to try and um, carrier activity is now requiring that any new um, any new subdivision that's being built has to have what they call a multi-box or a cluster box. And that means that you're not going to have one mailbox in a neighborhood. You're going to have a mailbox that's going to serve many people. And we think Drone Deck is going to be able to do that, and, and that's part of our... Uh, newer generation. So we're excited about what we've got in our patent portfolio, but we're also very excited about uh, the patent applications that we've got in our next generation. You're off. Yeah, thanks, John. Just wanted to touch on a couple of things here, some interesting uh, milestones that we have. You can see at the at the top lane, just some changes we're having. You know, John and Dan had mentioned uh, commercial units that Dan had shown earlier. We're also developing residential units, which are going to be around 60, 64% the size of the, the commercial units, the measurements that were a couple slides ago. And you can see in the in the seconds kind of, you know, who we're working with. We're obviously working with municipalities, uh, the city of Lawrence, uh, Oklahoma. Uh, we've done some, some demonstrations with uh, a cannabis delivery company. We've, uh, you know, presented to UPS. The last, um, the bottom row, I'll just really quickly touch upon, just to guys give you a flavor of what some of the, partnerships that we're creating and who we're looking at. You know, we've got your typical infrastructure type partners like your Oracle for our cloud infrastructure um, and, you know, some battery companies that we're working with and looking at innovative ways. Um, but we're also, you know, working with your DoorDash uh, uh, and Uber Eats type companies to work on the interface between the box and them. Um, I'll, I'll mention DroneUp, which is uh, owned by Walmart. Um, they have one of our units that we're doing some testing on. Um, but I'll just quickly, finally, just touch on uh, uh, Chimera Systems, a company in New York. And, you know, we're, we're not only, and Dan's going to get into some of the revenue streams, but we're not really looking at just 
what can we do with this valuable piece of real estate in front of a home from a delivery perspective, but what else can we do from a smart city perspective, micro weather, you know, what are the other things that we can integrate in that box? And to that end, we're looking at access control. We're looking at other features that we think are very compelling and will introduce different revenue streams for us. Um, and that's happening right now. So, um, uh, so this is just some of the details of what we're doing over the next couple of years. We just completed a pilot, Dan mentioned, with the United States Postal Service. So USPS delivering actually to our box, which is really exciting. Um, we also had, I mentioned in the last slide, some of the delivery companies. Uh, uh, we also had, we had a couple of restaurants and a couple of businesses. So it was a great pilot just to begin to understand the use, uh, the user interface and, and you know what challenges we're facing. So we had a lot of learnings from that. So the next couple of iterations of pilots or, or, or what I'll call larger uh, uh, trials are, you know, we're looking at 50 units and, and expanding the scope of who we're working with, not just a couple restaurants, and, and, and but more maybe some healthcare, also throwing in uh, some of the bigger retail names you can see down um, at the last slide, CVS and Walmart. So this is kind of a walk, crawl, run approach for us. Um, so we're looking at this iteration and, and learning a lot for when we, um, get to the big milestone, which I'll talk about here in a minute. So, you know, I mentioned in 2022, we're doing some pilots, uh, thousands of units over the next couple of years. The real hockey stick happens in 2025, where we're looking at 75,000 homes. So everything that we're doing now from hiring people to in implementing systems um, really is geared up. You know, we're looking at the back end, we're looking at installation, customer service, all kinds of challenges when you're dealing with so many boxes. So we're tackling that today in anticipation of that large hockey stick. Um, thanks, Dan. Thank you. Um, uh, one of the things that uh, we want to talk about here is the, the obviously the big thing, it's, it's the financial aspect of drone deck and how big the market opportunity really is. So, you know, a lot of people say, hey, I want a drone deck, how much is it? The answer is you can never buy one. You can only subscribe to it. We know that selling drone deck units would be a huge impediment to a wholesale rollout just because of the cost. So the way we defeat that, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, is by <clears throat> a subscription service similar to an Amazon Prime model for just about $20 a month <clears throat> or thereabouts on the residential side, uh, the user gets the app and the drone deck. We see that with 1% market share as a $3 billion opportunity. Um, big data, we're able to harvest all kinds of big data metrics. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry, guys. Um, just by sheer nature of where we're located, great connectivity, we can harvest big data metrics such as traffic flows, proximity, email addresses, weather patterns. Uh, we can stream live video, tag and track items through the ecosystem, um, traffic counting, uh, all kinds of different things. Um, and that we see that is a, about a $390 million opportunity with 1% market share. Um, platform access, anytime a shipper or deliverer accesses a drone deck, you know, that's a, that's a um, an opportunity that you're presenting to them uh, to secure your shipment, uh, reduce costs on theft, um, uh, damage, things like that. So they would pay a small a la carte fee each time uh, they make a delivery. And we see that as one point. $2 billion opportunity with just 1% of the market. Uh, charging, uh, every drone deck has a charging station built into it for uh, EVs. Not We're not doing a Tesla supercharge, but we could do a baseline charge to a Rivian or a mail truck, a Amazon truck. Uh, we're also envisioning being able to charge Bird and Lime scooters, uh, and then obviously aerial drones. Uh, the, pro the prospect of creating a limitless range for commercial drones is a huge uh, opportunity for the market. Um, right now, if Amazon were going to deliver to your house, uh, they'd have to calculate uh, what their charge is going halfway out to your house and then returning back. And if they can't uh, achieve that um, going halfway and back with a one charge, they can't even consider delivery to you. But with Drone Deck, it, we're creating a limitless range. A commercial drone can expend its entire charge coming to your location. Uh, land and take a charge, go across the street, 
pick something up and return with it. So when when a commercial drone lands and charges on your on your uh, drone deck, we're we're debiting, uh, say Amazon, we're crediting you, and we're taking a small transactional fee for that. And we see that as a you know. $80 million uh, opportunity with 1% of the market share. And then uh, ancillary things, you know, one of the things we always say at Drone Deck is there's really more we don't know about what we're gonna do than we do know. And the reason we say that, when you have this small piece of real estate that is the welcome, uh, welcome matter, the gateway to every home and business, not only in the US, but throughout the world with great connectivity, the use case opportunities for that platform are limitless. And, and the majority have, have not even been thought of yet. We're thinking about things like um, facial recognition uh, for amber or silver alerts. Uh, if you lose a pet, uh, we, we can identify your pet facially. Uh, shot spotter, uh, determining the epicenter of a gunshot, traffic counting, advertising, and on and on. So uh, we see that as you know an $80 million opportunity with 1% market share and there's a lot of growth opportunity there. So drone deck with 1% market is nearly a $5 billion opportunity. And we think we're very conservative uh, with the, the potential that drone deck really uh, is able to unlock as we grow and go. So, um, you know, if, if you want to play the autonomous market, which we all know is coming, uh, we've got the validation of the largest companies in the world, Google, Amazon, Apple, others, all iterating in our space. You know, you can invest in the commodity side, which is the, the ubiquitous uh, delivery modes, or you can invest in that one platform that is going to be the gateway to every home and business in the point where every uh, delivery starts and ends, and that's Drone Deck. And, and our IP gives us a very strong first position in this space. Uh, and I hope that you all recognize us for the huge opportunity that it really is. And I hope that you're not going to look back and say, that was right in front of me and, and I missed it. You know, uh, you missed the mailbox the first time back in 1858, but look what a big opportunity that turned out to be. You know, the total addressable market for drone deck is the same as the mailbox in the US. That's 160 million addresses. And that number grows by 4,000 new addresses every single day. So it's an evergreen, ever growing market. It's the kind of market that you should want to be a part of. So we're inviting you to find out more about our story and invest with us. But I, I see from Ryan, we did get our video uh, getting ready to go here. I think he, we saved that. So it's a little two minute video. We want to run that for you. A couple of things I'd like you to look at real quick while you're watching that is we have an emergency light feature uh, that we think can save lives by helping first responders uh, identify your location uh, through your drone deck with strobing lights. Uh, we got a heated and cooled cargo area. Uh, we got notifications. We have a UV process for disinfecting packages, as John alluded to. We also um, think of Drone Deck in several configurations. Our patents allow us to to uh, roll out in several ways. Drone Deck can be a vault in the ground that raises and lowers. It could be a roof hatch on a commercial building or a home. It could be uh, a, a small residential unit, three size uh, commercial units. It could be a cluster box unit with multiple compartments, uh, or it could be a portable unit that could be on a tank, a boat, camper, RV, commercial vehicle. So we can find you wherever you are and deliver security, safety, and notifications. Uh, okay, I think we can uh, we can go uh, to live uh, questions and kind of wrap it up here. But you know, I'd just like to say one more thing. Um, Thanks for everyone joining us. Um, I want to give a shout out to our nearly 5,000 investors that we already have in Drone Deck. We're, um, and, and thank everyone for being on our journey with us. Uh, we, we kind of see ourselves as a we the people story. Uh, we beat the big guys by just four days, Amazon Postal Service by two weeks and others by less than a month. So um, we have a very engaged investor community. Uh, and, you know, uh, our, our core principles are transparency and communication. We always keep you updated on where we are and what we're doing. And we value everybody that uh, puts $1 into this company. So appreciate you uh, uh, learning more about us today. And Anna, if you want to join us, we're happy to um, answer questions or see where we go from here. Thanks, guys. Great. Thank you for this presentation. Thrilling technology that you guys have and happy you're, you're in my home state, Oklahoma. All right. So please clarify a little bit for us. You are not publicly traded, correct? We are not publicly traded currently. We do have uh, aspirations and we've had several uh, uh, discussions. We have an investment banker engaged and there's a potential that we could be public sometime in the near future. And how does one invest if they're not an accredited investor? 
uh, we have two ways to invest. One for accredited investors. Um, we have a, a seed series round that's open currently. Uh, $10,000 minimum accredited investors. Shares are $1.75 each uh, today. Uh, on October 4th, we commence a crowdfunding campaign on startengine.com. Uh, the shares are going to go to $2.80 a share on that day. So if you're accredited and you want to come in before that, you can capture that dollar five delta uh, that's going to change on October 4th. Uh, if you come in after October 4th, we'll have both the seed series accredited round open at 280 a share, as well as the crowdfunding. Uh, the minimum on the crowdfunding is uh, $280, 100 shares at $2.80 each. Okay, it's going up. All right, David Schroeder wants to know what's the current valuation of the company? We are currently valued at $330 million. And uh, that's where we're launching on uh, October 4th. We'll, that'll, be the, that'll be the valuation on October 4th. We're a little bit less than that right now at the $1.75 price. Uh, it's about a 32% increase. And it just reflects internal milestones and benchmarks that the company's hit with increased IP, more partnerships, and pilot programs uh, getting ready to roll out. And John Rockwell wants to know, will Drone Deck charge a delivery fee for delivery to the drone company, or is it just a monthly fee to the owner? It's a subscription-based service that um, the user takes advantage of. You know, there's so much more to it in addition to all the features and benefits that you guys saw there. I mean, we see Drone Deck as a way to, to do commerce. So if you're ordering a Domino's pizza, we, we envision putting you in touch with the Domino's uh, app and allowing them to turn on the heat in your drone deck. Uh, if you're ordering pharmaceuticals from CVS, we'll allow them to turn on the cooling and things like that. So um, it, what the what the vendors do as far as uh, shipping costs and things, that's going to be to be determined by them. Yeah, you know, there may be a day where you know, your free Amazon Prime shipments are only free through drone delivery. So um, you know, we don't know how that's going to roll out in the future, but there's a lot of exciting uh, opportunities that we see that can really benefit the market on both sides. My goodness, Jetsons, here we come. Okay, so Victor Roberts wants to know, are you trying to get business as an option from the majors like FedEx and UPS, or are you trying to get business from the retailers like Amazon and Walmart? Yeah, it's a great question, Victor. We're, we're actually uh, approaching everyone. You know, our strategy is to uh, identify markets based on uh, three metrics, a willing municipality, a demographically rich user base, and then a company and delivery infrastructure that can take advantage of our platform. So when we get those areas, we want to go in and blanket and saturate them. And then we want to pull all the shippers and deliverers and retailers uh, onto our platform because uh, we all know there's nothing more compelling than a customer telling their vendor how they want something to be done. And when we get that kind of saturation, you know, everybody's going to be giving their drone deck address as their delivery point. So we think that's going to be a really huge moment for us. Harvey Wade wants you to explain where the boxes are going to be placed. Mm -hmm. How many can you place? You know, um, we see this as a cable satellite TV rollout. Um, we, we, again, with a saturation strategy, we want to go into literally neighborhoods and business parks and do uh, wholesale installs. And so um, we, you know, we always say you get the most utility out of a drone deck street side because it really opens up uh, uh, not only the window for aerial drone delivery, but robotic delivery, unmanned driverless vehicle, and then conventional delivery. So, um, that opportunity is there, but, but the cool thing about Drone Deck is because of all of our patent technology and the features that we have awarded, it could be a balcony on a high-rise building. You know, a drone can come up and deliver a pizza to you uh, on your balcony. Uh, you know, it could be in back in your backyard of your home or business. Maybe you don't want anybody to see it uh, because of access. Uh, it could be it could be located really anywhere you want it to be. Um, you know, we always just say, yeah, we're kicking the mailbox to the curb. That's the new drone deck, and so we're really excited about uh, all these different opportunities and. Yeah, you know, that's going to be your choice. Robin Casey wants you to go over the model, go over that one more time from shipping to receiving. What happens and who's paying for it? You know, it gets back to, you know, getting back to early in our presentation, 
you know, every day over 100 million items purchased online, 91% are five pounds or less, right? So that makes them really ripe for drone delivery. When those items are conventionally delivered today, they cost over $2 each. When those same items are delivered autonomously to a drone deck, that cost drops over half to a buck. So to Nero's point earlier, every 11 days, there's a $1 billion savings to the shipping economy. So now you, you've got that savings. In addition to that, what about lost packages? Everybody pays for those every day. You know, you don't just call Amazon and say, hey, my package didn't show up and, and they give you a new one and that's free. We're all paying for that. So we're disrupting missed ships. We're, discuss we're disrupting package theft. Every day there's 1.6 million packages stolen in the U.S. every single day right now which is really hard to believe it's a huge number so we're going to disrupt that so when you factor out stolen packages and that cost missed shipped items and that cost and then you're speeding up convenience you're lowering the inherent delivery cost you know you're taking vehicles off the road you're speeding up uh delivery uh everything about drone deck is great so really we see this as an opportunity where shipping companies can actually raise their profit margin while lowering the actual cost to the user. And that's one of those rare win-win uh, opportunities that you just don't see very many times. Well, Lance Stewart wants you to talk a little bit more about the shipping aspect. How will this save the shippers on a percentage of their shipping costs? You know, the last mile delivery is the most expensive. Um, if you think about it, you're rolling out a uh, carbon fuel uh big UPS truck delivery van, uh, multiple times in some cases where the shipper isn't there to sign, uh, something gets misdelivered, stolen, you're doing it again and again. You know, Drone Deck is encrypted, authenticated, secure delivery. You know when you have it, there's a blockchain stamp, chain of custody, uh, and this is gonna be hugely reducing uh, cost to, to the whole ecosystem. You know, fresher, better, faster, cheaper. Those are all things that Drone Deck is gonna deliver through autonomous delivery. And you know, right now, um, you, you know, you're thinking drone delivery, is that really gonna happen? Uh, you know, are these boxes gonna be out there? And I'm saying, yes. It's, it's not just a, a fantasy, that like an idea I had in 2014. Um, when I had the idea, Everybody thought I was crazy. And one thing I learned is if you have a futuristic idea and people don't think you're crazy, you're too late. So <laughs> you're right on time. And uh, in the acceleration by the biggest companies in the world all around us, uh, and the FAA is reducing restrictions. Uh, you can see legislation happening throughout the country. Um, it's all happening. And I'm just saying, uh, you know, I hope that you'll take note of this right now in this moment and harken back to this point where you saw this presentation today and, and you did something about it. And even if you come in for a small investment with us and take the ride, um, I can give you a quick trajectory of the drone deck investment to date. Um, I had the idea in 2014. I funded it myself for six and a half years. I uh, put about three quarters of a million dollars into it. I always believe that um, your equity in your business is your capital of development. If you take the short money, you do everyone a disservice, yourself, your family, your business, but most importantly, everybody that you took a dime from because you end up on the side of the road kind of dead in the water. Uh, you're out of capital. You're out of a basis to get more funding. So by funding it myself to the point where I felt like it was investable by others. Uh, that happened about two and a half years ago. We took our first investor in uh, for $200,000, Dave Schwind, good friend of mine. I hadn't asked anybody to put one dime in, and uh, he approached me one day, really, when I was I could use some help. I had 25 engineers working every day, and uh, I was really laboring to hit these cost uh, uh, bills that were coming in all the time. And, he said, hey, drone deck. And I said, yeah, what about it? He goes, I want in. I said, well, Dave, you know, for the last six and a half years, I haven't asked one person to put one dime in. He goes, I know. I said, well, I'm not soliciting you. He goes, I'm soliciting you. And that was very timely and really, uh, it was like a godsend. So he put 200,000 in, came in at a $58 million valuation. Uh, shortly thereafter, uh, Centerpoint Capital out of Zionsville put 200,000 in at a $92 million valuation. Then we began our crowdfunding campaign last year on WeFunder.com, uh, where we became, uh, we earned the distinction of being the highest valuation 
pre-revenue company uh, to ever successfully crowdfund in the history of crowdfunding. We started at $123 million value, valuation. We concluded at a $223 million valuation about just about a year ago. Uh, we're set to commence our next crowdfund right now at a $330 million valuation. Uh, we have nearly 5,000 investors. Um, our shares split two for one on October 15th of last year. Uh, so a $2 investment when we started is worth $5.60 today. We're really proud of the trajectory, uh, the traction we have in the marketplace, um, all the media attention we have. If you Google Drone Deck, you can see we've got worldwide coverage. Uh, we've got an agreement with Broad Electronics Limited out of India to manufacture our units. Uh, it's a $10 billion USD company. Uh, they made an announcement at the beginning of this year that they had three major projects that they were proud to work on to all 10,000 employees and Drone Deck was uh, number one on that list. So really proud of where we are and the recognition that we're getting by uh, really credible uh, institutions and entities and people out there. And uh, it's a decision that you guys have to make for yourselves, but uh, we're really excited. We've got a great investor community, highly engaged, um, Dave Schrader. Dave Schrader, I met you, asked our first question. He's one of our investors, so I'm glad to hear he's out there watching it. Thanks, Dave. He's a first responder, actually, uh, out of Tennessee, and he's actually gotten an, an endorsement list of over from over 200 first responders about our 911 alert feature. So if you have an emergency at your home or business, you hit the 911 icon on your Drone Deck app. It says police, fire, ambulance. You select the service you need, so you need an ambulance. It sends an automated dispatch to the dispatcher. Uh, at that same time, your Drone Deck starts strobing. Uh, red and white lights so first responders can immediately find you time is life we're proud of all the different things that we're bringing it's not just a box for shipping and receiving it's really going to be the conduit to your life and you're going to be amazed at all the interaction that you have on a daily basis with drone deck as this starts to roll out fantastic we have so many more questions for you, but our time is up because we've got to get to our next presenter in about two minutes. But this is fascinating stuff. So glad you joined us today. And please come back again in the future and give us some updates. Really hey, check out Real quick on those extra questions, Anna, if you don't mind. Hey, if anybody has a question out there, I'm Dan at DroneDeck.com, D-R-O-N-E-D-E-K.com. My number is 317 694 Seven five two zero. Really invite everybody to reach out. Uh, I have time for everybody, and uh, uh, thanks for just uh, wanted to know more. Have a great day, Anna. Thanks for making this possible. You guys did a great job. Thank you so much for your time and your presentation. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Okay, everyone, stay with us. We'll be transitioning to our next presenter in just a few minutes. <laughs> 